How does it necessarily follow that if you have a moral law, this necessitates that you had a moral lawgiver? It's a great question. And actually, I pondered about that for a long time, John. You know, I said, where do I, how do you find this link between a moral law and a moral lawgiver? And it all came about with the problem of evil being raised. When you raise the problem of evil, you assume there's good. When you assume there's good, you assume there's a moral law. You assume there's a moral law. You have to posit a moral lawgiver. But the question is why? And here's the answer to that. Because anyone who raises the question on the problem of evil, it's either raised by a person or about a person, which means the problem of evil, when it is posited, assumes the intrinsic worth of personhood. If there's no intrinsic worth to personhood, the question actually self-destructs. So personhood is necessary for the question to be valid. That's why we can only justify it if the person is the creation of an individual of indistinct worth, which is God himself. That's why we move to a moral law giver. The question self-destructs if personhood is not valuable. It's a very critical jump, but it's very important. And whenever I've talked to skeptics or whatever in this, it gives them pause. They say, well, you know, yeah, yeah. And then they try to divert and move off in other directions. Your life and my life assume intrinsic worth for the problem of evil as a question to be valid. And that intrinsic worth can only come if we are the creation of God himself, not the random product of time plus matter plus chance.